All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining. Uh, my name is Michelle Johnson. I'm the event marketing specialist here at Process Maker. Uh, welcome to our webinar on how Drake University is leveraging business process automation. We will explore their innovative strategies, real life examples, and cutting edge technologies implemented for success. Feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A section. Uh, we will answer them at the end. So today's speakers are uh, Tyler Spoon. He is the esteemed assistant director of enterprise applications at Drake University. He'll be sharing his expertise on how Drake is leveraging business process automation. We also have Greg Allworth. He is our director of higher education sales here at Process Maker. Uh, he has been working in the education tech space for eight years, and prior to that was in sales leadership at NetSuite and Oracle. First, uh, just a little background on Drake University. So Drake University is recognized as one of the finest universities in the Midwest. As a mid-sized private university in Des Moines, Iowa, Drake offers students the benefits and resources of a larger institution with the advantages of intimate class sizes and close personal relationships. Now, just a little bit about Process Maker. Uh, so Process Maker for Higher Education helps colleges and universities improve the student experience through automating manual and paper-based processes. Campus users, such as the registrar or the admissions office, can design online forms and add sophisticated automation and workflows using our simple process designer and screen builder. Process Maker works with all student information systems and financial systems and makes the flow of data across the campus seamless. Over to you, Greg. Take it away. Hi, good afternoon, everyone in, uh, and I guess in Eastern, Central, and Mountain Time. Good morning still uh, to anyone who's joining in Pacific Time or potentially internationally. Uh, my name is Greg Allworth, and uh, I'm thrilled to be here today interviewing Tyler Spoon from uh, Drake University and also welcoming uh, Drake's mascot, Griff, behind him over his shoulder there. So it's uh, it's nice to have both of you on today. Tyler, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here. Great. So just to give everybody a little sense of what we're going to go through today, uh, Tyler and I are going to spend a little time talking about Drake University, their use of their history with business process automation, their history with Process Maker, and, uh, and kind of where they've gotten to with them um, around automating processes and some of the value they've seen within, within their institution. We're going to... Um, we're going to take a, a little bit to do that, probably the first sort of third of, of our conversation today. And then we're really lucky because Tyler's agreed to sort of take over the uh, the, the webinar and sh walk us through so one of the, uh, the really, really interesting processes that they've built and talk about some of the different challenges, some of the different opportunities, challenges, and benefits they've seen from that. So um, I'm really excited about uh, about that part of our conversation today. We've got, we're going to have lots of time for questions, so please ask questions as you, um, you can put questions in the chat, you can put questions in the Q&A button, you can hold on until the end because we'll save some time for questions, but we want to make sure that uh, if you have questions, we get them answered and we should have lots of time to do that today. With, um, you know, we're going to be talking about the Process Maker Business Process Automation platform today. If you happen to live in the Lucian world, you may know that product uh, as a Lucian workflow. So uh, as we talk about them, depending on what the student system you use within your specific institution is, you uh, when we use those terms, we talk about process maker or we talk about a Lucian workflow, we're talking about the, the same thing just so that everyone's really clear on that. So let's get to, let's get started. Uh, Tyler, maybe first uh, first, let's get to know you a bit. Why don't you tell us a bit about uh, yourself, your history, and your current role with Drake University. Sure. Uh, so my name is Tyler Spoon. I am the Assistant Director of Enterprise Applications with Drake University. Um, I have been in my current role for uh, about three years. Uh, so I run a, a team of nine, and it's a mixture of database administrators, developers, and application admins um, that support a vast number of applications that that Drake uses, the biggest one being the banner ERP from Elucian, as you mentioned earlier, Greg. Um, so we are we're very deeply integrated with that banner system, and we're looking to even branch out and integrate with other systems. 
Um, so my, my role is a lot of directing those people, but also utilizing Process Maker to figure out how to uh, integrate all of the various products that we have into a single business process tool. That's great. So um, you mentioned a little bit about, you touched a little bit on your technology infrastructure as a, as a banner school, but maybe you could give us a little bigger picture of what sort of the, the total technology orchestra architecture looks like within Drake and, and a little bit of Drake's philosophy towards uh, technology and uh, on, on campus and, and interacting with the students. Sure. Well, uh, so early on, like with most schools, we were just purchasing applications left and right just to just to fill in all the holes that our main ERP didn't fill in the greatest. Um, I think we've matured enough now to realize that that was sort of a mistake. And now we have all these separate silos and things happen in one system and another system doesn't know about it. And even people using the same system don't know that things are happening that they should. So um, an example uh, is using a separate admissions program from Banner or a separate housing system from Banner um, using some of those. And we get, we just get lost in translation sometimes. So one thing that we're looking to do is kind of bridge that gap and figure out how do we how do we trigger off of things that happen in one system and make them populate into another. Um, so we we've started with that. Um, two of the applications that we're already working on integrations with our Microsoft Teams and our um, IT service management portal Team Dynamics. So I'll be able to. We're we're already starting to integrate some of that with Process Maker. Right. So how did um, how did Drake first get involved with Process Maker? So we first got involved with Process Maker because, um, well, to be totally frank, I got tired of Banner Workflow. Um, Banner Workflow is an archaic um, business process automation tool that is just incredibly difficult to work with. If there are any other Banner schools on here that are still using Banner Workflow, uh, my sympathies. We are almost out of the woods with with that one. Um, so we, we really wanted to look for a tool that could work with more than just Banner. Banner workflow was very limited. You can only use it with Banner and that was it. It didn't really look outwards unless you're creating custom scripts um, and then you know getting all the necessary firewall stuff in place, be able to let it speak out and all that. Um, so we wanted to find something that would allow us to integrate disparate systems. Doesn't have to necessarily be Banner, but be able to integrate between them, but also be user-friendly enough that my team wasn't on the hook for developing every single business process. Um, so we evaluated a, a ton of different tools from the easiest ones are just, you know, drag and drop, create a screen and throw it out there to the super difficult ones where there's no way I can expect anyone outside of IT to be able to use it. Uh, basically where you're scripting every single step. Process Maker seems to be able to, uh, honestly be able to do either one of those if you wanted to, but at base, it's a nice uh, mixture of both where it's, easy enough that I feel comfortable giving it to a non-technical person to at least develop the base process, but then be able to make it uh, complex enough that IT can step in and do some custom scripting or some custom stuff to be able to make it do exactly what we want it to do. That's great. So when you, once you had selected Process Maker, kind of what did you do to get started? Where did you, where were the the first places that you started to look at automation and and can you talk to us a little bit about how you sort of started to dip your toe and and get into using the system? Yeah, so first off, when we started, Process Maker has been a fantastic partner. Um, they gave us, uh, I believe, a full year of professional services where we were meeting with uh, one of the Process Maker developers on a weekly basis and just talking through the issues that we were having, uh, getting some one-on-one -on -one training with them. Um, we were one of the early adopters of Process Maker for us. So that might be one of the reasons why, but... Um, but it, it was fantastic to be able to partner with you guys to kind of get us off the ground and running. Um, the very first stuff that we focused on was more of a digitization um, movement rather, rather than automation. So we took some paper forms that we have and just moved them into Process Maker. There was still no integration. There was no scripting, anything like that. But we were at least digitizing some of our paper forms and getting them moving around in the technological space as opposed to the physical space. You know, getting out of using email and instead of and instead using these online forms. And how did you see adoption of that? Were these forms? Did they were they tending to be student facing forms? Were they things that were internal process based forms? 
And what was the what was the initial feedback from that? So we started very limited. We started just in our finance department. Um, so it was, it was very limited to just finance to start. Um, they were skeptical at first, but I think after the first, the, the very first iteration of going through, they were like, oh, I see the power of this. I see where this could be really interesting. And that was before we even showed them that we can actually start integrating with Banner and pulling information or pushing information um, to and from that system. Uh, and then from there, we started expanding out. Now students are using it a little bit with, we have a few processes that students use. And the one that I'm gonna be showing today is gonna to be the first major student process that has a ton of complexity in it that we're gonna be pushing out here, hopefully very soon. Um, but it's so far that we've been rolling it out across separate departments, different departments, and um, the, the attitude has been very positive towards it. People are very excited about it. They're happy to, to have it. And they're they're wanting more. My backlog is just growing with requests for more processes. That's great. We love to we love to hear that people are uh, are kind of coming out of the woodwork and wanting to uh, wanting to automate processes. That that says that they're seeing value across the across the platform for sure. We, yeah, it's, uh, getting, it, it's getting so big that um, I actually got approval to hire a brand new person. I actually see uh, Katie Ferguson. She's actually in here today, so she's watching. So she's going to be joining us next week, and she's going to be all but dedicated to this this product and working to bring in new processes. That's great, Katie. Well, welcome to Drake and welcome to the uh, welcome to the process maker ecosystem. We're excited to have you on board. Um, when you think of so, uh, you know, when I think of of higher ed in general tends to be a place where there's a little bit of, um, you know, there are some silos built across or across institutions, different departments tend to work independently. Um, you know, it's kind of higher ed's a designed a little bit, a little bit like that. And um, did you have you found that with some of these processes that you built out that you've been able to maybe create some some of those cross departmental or, or cross collaboration bridges that maybe didn't exist before or were hard to bridge? We're just starting to, to tap on that. Yeah. Um, so we, we do have one process that really goes across boundaries. Um, but it's it's used by it's only used by two departments, so it's not it's not hugely cross departmental. But um, a couple of processes that I have in the works are very much multi departmental, spanning from HR, finance, payroll, registrar, financial aid, um, kind of running the gamut of uh, a lot of our departments, um, and that's coming out. And so far, I haven't had much pushback. They're all pretty excited about having having this all digitized and in some cases automated. Right, and is there are there some of the areas that have had that you see kind of real big impact for process automation on the the Drake campus when you know when we talk in the industry we hear about student success or we hear about back office efficiency or departmental collaboration like where are the the do you see sort of the big opportunities on Drake campus so uh, me being the IT geek that I am I'm actually really focused on security um, so some okay. of the processes yeah. focused around security. Um, so I have an entire security process um, around Banner and granting privileges within Banner. Um, it helped us bring it all together into one request um, to be able to track it all so that our auditors were happy. They could see when we granted something, who approved it, when they approved it, what was asked for, so we can really map it all together. Um, another one that we're getting ready to push out is our, for HR, our employee status form, which is going to, um, it, it's, it's what we use to, you know, record someone being added as an employee or they're changing positions or they're leaving Drake for, a, for another position. Um, one thing that we're always nicked on is that HR lets someone go, but our systems aren't quite set up just right to terminate them at the exact correct moment. So this is going to be a huge step in kind of, um, ensuring that security is in place and we're not, you know, we're making, we're making our auditors happy, I guess. Right. Well, you, you mentioned a pretty key term there, auditors, right? Those are people that you want to have happy and you want to make sure that they're really comfortable with what you're doing. And it's great to hear that, that process maker, the platform is able to help you achieve some of that audit compliance, governance, you know, those, those key areas that are so important on campus. So what about, um, you know, where you've, the, how's the evolution of your usage looked over time? You started with, you started with digitizing, you started it in finance, you, mm -hmm. you mentioned that you're starting to roll out to student. How's that, how's that kind of evolution looked over time? 
Yeah, so, so um, like I mentioned, we started very simply digitization. We stayed in the process maker platform to start. We didn't have any sort of you know scripts that were reaching out to different systems or anything like that. Um, we started simply on putting data into process maker and formatting it to where the, our users in the finance office, it would made it easier for them to do data entry. Grouped it all together, you know, sometimes sorted them out, um, just made it a lot easier for them to be able to do it. So it reduced their overall time for data entry. Um, after that, we kind of moved forward and we started moving some of our notification workflows from banner workflow into process maker. And those are extraordinarily simple um, processes. All it is is it gets a signal from um, from banner just via a trigger and it just sends an email. That's that's all it does. It's very, very simple. And we've got I don't know, a couple dozen of those in, in production now. Uh, it was very easy to set up. So we moved to that. So that was kind of our first uh, taste of integrating with Banner and allowing some data to flow from Banner into Process Maker. That was a very simple one because you pass it through Trigger, but you have a lot of control over that. Um, after we got comfortable with that, we started actually looking at scripting using Ethos integration. Um, and this is one of those big, big differentiating points between Process Maker Platform and Elucian Workflow that you mentioned. We are not an Elucian Workflow customer. Um, we contract directly with Process Maker, so we don't have all the pre-built connectors that come with Lucian workflow. So we've developed our scripts manually and we're doing all of the, all the security work, all the token exchange, all that manually through scripts. But we were able to connect and we are pulling information from Banner. And in some cases, even now, we're starting to push some data to Banner. Um, we've gotten to the point where for some of our vendors that were, were paying out for whatever reason, now, when they are requested to be created through Process Maker, our finance department just looks at it, make sure all the data looks right. They press a button, and then bam, they're in Banner. They're ready to go, all created correctly, and ready to go. That's great. Now, as you've been kind of evolving, I bet you've, I, I bet you've learned some lessons. I bet you've Lots developed some best practices. There's some things you, uh, you, you know, lessons, lessons learned, challenges, opportunities. I'd love to hear about that part of it is what you, what you feel like you've learned on this kind of three-year journey in your role working with process maker and process automation. Yeah. So, so one thing that I've learned is from the very start, you need to map out the current process. If you don't already have it mapped out, sit down, take the time, take the few hours that's going to take to truly map out what the current process is. Even if it's a manual process, the, the change of record that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you first the, the current manual process as I've kind of mapped it out and then what we transferred it to and how we expand it on it. So map it out first. Um, the second one, and we're getting bit by this now, but we did not settle on a common list of variables to use within the screens. So like, for instance, Drake ID versus student ID. Now, when you use different variable names, it's hard to reuse screens or reuse scripts. So settling on some very common variables to use or even just a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, format, a variable format to use. Are you using underscores? Are you using camel case? Things like that. I, I wish we would have set that early on instead of so late in the process like we are now. Um, some of the... Uh, some of the screens are sometimes a little difficult to work with with the visibility rules. I know ProsMaker is working on it, um, but sometimes it's better to just split out screens into, into distinct um, usability requirements as opposed to trying to use the visibility rules. Uh, for example, email screens, it's, it's very easy to create a screen that says, if it's approved, send this little tidbit of information, but if it's denied, send out this bit instead. And just separating them out makes, the, makes everything just a lot cleaner. To, to look at on, on the process map. Um, and then I'd say the, the last the last little one that's really specific, I think, to Process Maker, but um, wait to develop your reports and your dashboards until after you get quite a bit of data on the process. Because that that really shows um, shows your end users what it is that they're looking for, even if they don't know that they're looking for it. Uh, we're starting to see that now with some of our processes where they're coming back and saying, well, we didn't realize that this type of data was even available. So can we start looking at this? And with ProsMaker, you can report on any piece of data that's part of the process. So the answer right. is yes. Right. That's great. Those are some really good, uh, those are some really good points. I think you're, you know, it's clear how deep you are into the, into the platform and kind of 
really understand it. And we're, we're all really kind of benefiting from your, your experience with that. I'll ask you one last question before we kind of transition over and get you to do some show and tell for us. But have there been some real specific or, or benefits that you've seen on campus or um, value that you've that that you think the, the university has received from using process maker or kudos that you've heard from um, you know people uh, people in the organization what's kind of what's kind of been the feedback and the and the value of using the pro the uh, the system yeah so I'll uh, come back to the, the finance uh, vendor piece that I was talking about earlier that was one of our first complex projects that we went forward with um, at first they were very hesitant to do it and they weren't a fan of having to do things through this form now instead of just letting someone email them and, and just have the information there and just enter them. But the administration within finance really liked the ability to go back and look at when was that requested, who requested it, what was the reason for it, where was the supporting documentation to say, yes, we should add this person. Um, and then after a while, when we started proving that we can integrate with Banner and make their lives easier instead of just making it different, um, Finance really started to uh, really started to come around and eventually ended up singing the praises of Process Maker to our university president. Um, I uh, I believe that they have said that on a general week um, or in a general month, excuse me, doing vendors, they typically spent about twenty hours creating vendors or updating vendor information, something like that. Um, this process cuts it down to less than an hour per week or per month, excuse me, less than an hour per month of doing that same work. Wow, saved virtually save somewhere around 19 hours a yep. week of time. That's that's really something. That's that's great feedback. Thanks for sharing. Well, with that, I think what uh, I think what most of the people on this call will want to see is they want to uh they want to get under the covers and see a little bit about uh about how you're using the system and things you've built. So, I'm going to sure. turn it over to you and let you uh let you walk us through one of the really interesting processes that you've built out. Sure. Okay. So the, the process that I'm going to show, um, it's still in development, so bear with me if it's not the prettiest yet, um, but it's it's a super complex one that I'm, I'm super excited to get launched, and it's our change of record. Um, this process is going to allow a student to submit um, to the registrar to have their field of study or something about their academic record change. They're adding a major minor, they're dropping one. Um, they want to move their graduation date out another year or move it a little closer. They they, they want to change something about their academic record. Um, and it's an extraordinarily manual process that they do it now. Um, sorry, Greg, can you let me know when you can see my screen? Yeah, we can see it great. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. So so this is their process that they have as of now. This is a completely manual process. When you think of the little hand here, it's all manual. Um, so the very first thing is we do already have an online form. So this isn't a, digi a digitization movement. This is truly is a modernization and an automation movement. Um, so they submit an online form and then an email goes to the registrar. From that moment on, technology is mostly out of it. They track things through Excel spreadsheets and their email inbox. Not a great, not a great look for that. So they first review it. And they have a whole bunch of rules that they go through to decide, should this be auto-approved or do we need some additional input? If it could be auto-approved, great. They make the change, they email the student, they manually figure out what departments need notification about it, and they email those departments. If it's not auto-approved, they have to go and identify what college or school that student is part of or that they're requesting access to through a, a, a new field of study or you know dropping something, adding on or something along those lines. And they have to email that school and then wait for them. So they email the school and they wait and they wait and they check every so often. Is the response received? No? Okay, great. Email them again. Figure it out. Wait for it. Is it anything yet? No? Okay, go back. Do it again. It could take quite a long time. And they're doing all of this manually. So they're having to check this uh, you know, every day, every other day to look. And then once it finally is approved or denied, then you know they follow the same steps. If it's denied, they email the student. If it's, if it's approved, then great. They go do all of this line over here again. They did 850 requests in spring of 2023, and it took them 70.8 hours to do all of those requests. So this is a very hands-on, heavy work process to do them. Um, it's worth noting that of these 850, about 600 of them came in within the span of 30 days. Uh, right. I was going to ask a little bit about what the kind of elapsed time frame of this all hap happening. That's you pretty much would have someone dedicated full time to this 
to this process during that period of time? Pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Um, our registrar has said that she's excited for this particular process to come because she's hoping that it will free up quite a bit of, of her person's time to work on other things that still need to get done. Yeah. Um, as does. we had in most higher ed institutions, the, you know, the work doesn't get moved to someone else. It just waits for you to have more time. It just keeps piling up. Right. So th this is our current process. It looks very simple. And, you know, in some ways it is relatively simple. It's one person doing a ton of work to gather the approvals and make all the changes. The new version looks a little messy. Okay, again, so forgive me, but this is the new version. So we got lots of lines, lots of decisions, but in a happy path scenario, um, this whole process will now take the registrar less than five minutes. Even, wow. even in most more complicated cases, this will take the registrar specifically less than five minutes because we're utilizing all of the process maker abilities of you know, making decisions automatically, figuring out who needs to be notified and doing that automatically. Um, so we'll, we'll just kind of start from the top. So we're gonna have a web entry start event. So one of the things that process maker allows us to do is basically embed this form into a website. So we're going to do that. We're gonna have a link out on the website and we're gonna launch it and it's gonna show them this change of record request form. When they do that, we're automatically gathering data about them. We're gathering um, what their majors are, what their minors are. We're gathering when their um, graduation date is. All the stuff that they would have had to gather manually when the registrar's office, we're now gathering via script right from this form. Um, after they submit it, uh, we run a couple more scripts to get more information. Um, so get student attributes. We're, get, we're figuring out, are they a international student? Are they an athlete? What school are they part of? Who? What departments need to be notified later on? Uh, if they make a change. One of the uh, things that Drake has in place is that if they are an international student or an athlete, they need to be notified and they have to explicitly approve these changes. So we have that built in. Prospect allows us to build that in. If they're an if they're an international student, great, international needs to approve. Send them in here. Every three days, if they don't respond, automatically send them a new reminder that says, hey, you still have to do this and make them make the decision both the athletics and the international office have veto power. So if they say no, that's it. It's just done, right? But if they both say yes, great. The nice thing is that Prosmaker allows us to start a parallel request and then wait for it at the end. So this, this uh, gateway over here is actually waiting for all of this to complete. And sometimes there might not be anything. If they're not an athlete or an, inter or, uh, excuse me, or an international student, it just goes right here and processes along, no problem. Move down a little bit. So now we're getting now we're getting into the meat of the the whole process. So the nice thing is that if they're updating their catalog term, you know, basically when they're effectively saying this is when I am truly starting my major or my program. Um, they can update that. They can drop a field of study without much approval. They can update the graduation term without much approval other than from the registrar. Um, if they're adding or dropping honors, okay, we have a manual task. But instead of the registrar getting the request and then sending it to the person that does it, this just goes directly to that person, right? It gets assigned automatically. Um, this is where the real power is coming in, is when they're adding. So I, I have I have three sections here. I've got one for majors, one for minors, and then one for uh, basically interests, for tracks or concentrations. And they're all the same. So I'm only going to go through just the majors because they, they all follow the exact same steps. Right. Um, well, we go in and we gather more information about the major that they're wanting to add. And then we use one of Pressmaker's new tools called uh, decision tables. And this is really what the registrar is doing manually right now. If we open this up, it's basically a giant if statement, right? So we have a whole bunch of conditions in here that we say is either automatically denied, some of them are automatically approved, some of them just need some additional approval. So for example, if I'm if I'm adding an art history major and my GPA is less than 2.5, auto deny. It's just not going to happen. The registrar doesn't even have to know about this. They, they don't do this decision here, but they have the ability to update this table and add these rules on their own without any help from IT. They have a link to be able to get in here and update it and add their own um, add their own requirements for each of these. Yeah, I imagine if you've got some familiarity with Excel, this would, you know, this would seem pretty standard for you. 
Absolutely. And it's uh, like I said earlier, it's a giant if statement. So instead of having 17 or 20 uh, gateways to say, okay, if it's one of these, then do this. If it's one of these, then do this. We just have it all laid out right here. And we just return a very simple either, and I call this a route that it's going to follow, and then the decision. So in this case, you know, uh, this ELED major, if you're under 2.5, deny it. And then this GPA SOE has a special email that gets sent out as, as a result. Or if you're adding music ed, music education as a major, okay, great. Well, this one needs some additional approval. So I'm going to send it to the additional approval arts and sciences route that I'm going to follow. And all this returns just right back to the process and allows me to use it at this gateway to decide where do we go next? Okay, if I need to get more approvers, great. Let's go figure out who's supposed to approve for this major. I have a collection, which again is just another table within Process Maker that my script is reaching into and figuring out who am I supposed to assign this particular issue to. And then automatically assign that task. Again, from the registrar's point of view, they know nothing about this process at this point. They have not been involved yet. This is all prior to the registrar even being notified, which is not the way it is today. So it does that for majors, minors, and our concentrations that we call tracks. Um, it does it for all three of those categories, and it will sit here and wait until all of the additions have been processed, until they get a vote on every single addition that the student said they wanted to add. And then we send a summary. We, we generate a PDF of the decisions, and we send a summary to the student. And we move back up the process. And again, we have another sync here where we're actually waiting for every single piece that they could do on the change of record. They can do one or all of these. Um, every single piece has to get to this point first before we progress. So we're waiting here before we bombard the registrar with a bunch of requests. Right. Once it all comes in, then it comes up. The registrar has a review. They do it all in one step. They're already told right there and then what needs to be done, what needs to be changed, who needs to be changed, and what needs to be added or removed. And then they're done. So they have just this one step now. All the information is at their fingertips and they just move forward through it. And then we create a summary. We figure out who we're supposed to notify again, looking at those departments. And then we send out that completed email to all those departments automatically. Registrar isn't telling us who we need to notify, right? We're just doing it through Process Maker. So, so you've taken a process where the very first thing that would happen is it would go to the registrar who would have to make a series of decisions about how to pro how to move that request forward based effectively on probably you know some uh, you know institutional rules but also what's in their head probably yep. you know you know local knowledge that they have and then and that would then kick off a process that they would have to really manage through um through virtually every step to exactly. a process that if there is no real decisions required within it, if it follows, as you called it, I love that term, the happy path, it's just going to go and and make all those changes. And the, and the registrar is going to see that at the very end as a really as a, an FYI, knowing that the system has made the changes it, uh, it needs to, and that that student is now on their way to graduating in a, in a new program. Yeah, so one, one asterisk, I'm not quite to that automation step yet. I'm, yeah. I'm almost there, but I'm, I'm not quite there. So the registrar is still doing the manual tasks, but all the information that they're gonna need is already right there. They don't have to go out and look for any of it. It's right. all there. They get all the approvals. They have all the information already. They right. don't have to go out and do anything anymore. They just do it when they get the email. It's done. Sure. Yeah, that's... um. That's really fascinating. And that, I, I mean, I, has the has the registrar told you what they're going to do with all the extra time that they've, they're going to gain from this? Or are they? Uh... Uh, they're they're going to work on the other project with Process Maker that we're partnering with you on. <laughs> That's what they're going to do. Use it for. <laughs> That's great. They catch up on maybe take an extra vacation day that they've been. That's right. For a That's while. right. But it, it is our ultimate goal that eventually we're just going to get to the point where we send the registrar an email and say, hey, they want to make these changes all good and then when they hit a button boom it just does it and then yeah. it is more of an fyi hey this student did this right just so you know that's definitely and, the ultimate goal and for some of the real key decision points here like international students or athletes or you know those those key points where you've got um you know you've got prerequisites for moving over into different 
different types of, of programs, you know, there you you really eliminate anyone slipping through the cracks or uh, an uh, an error being made that potentially you have to create an exception for, or you have to go back and tell a student that maybe you know they they in fact couldn't do something. So I think that's a um, that's a real benefit too. Is it it takes there's a bunch of different areas here where there could be potential for those sort of edge cases or or exceptions, and you want to make sure that you you get those out of the process as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Prosmaker has allowed us to leverage a lot of those exceptions. One thing I didn't I didn't really pull up when I was looking at it down here, but um, they do have these boundary events that allow you to say, hey, if there's an error, follow this route instead. So that's yeah. what I have here. If there's an error with the major table, the major decision table, for whatever reason, something goes wrong in the decision table, can't figure out what to return, it throws an error. And instead, this is when our registrar would step in and make a manual decision on, okay, what are we supposed to do with this particular thing? Right. It's not just stuck in no person's land. It's uh, it's there's actually a an, an action to correct that to correct that error and then keep the process moving forward. Exactly. Wow. Well, this is great. When do you uh, when do you anticipate going live? Well, um, we anticipated going live this week, but um, a series of, of setbacks around things and the release of these decision tables, which radically uh, changed how we were going to implement this. Right. Um, this is back a little way. So we're still maybe three weeks out from from implementing this, but but we're we're getting much closer. Wow. Well, I'm excited to hear. Um, We'll have to have you back on another uh, on another webinar to hear kind of what the what the the um, the feedback to this is and some of the and and just some of the benefits that you've seen come out of that once you get to once you start running a lot of these these student requests through this. Thank you very much for taking some time to show us uh, to show us and walk us through this this process. Yeah, no problem at all. Great. So I think we're we're at the point in the call where we can uh, the webinar where we can take some questions. And um, I'm not sure if there's any questions in the chat or in the Q&A, or if anyone wants to raise a hand, but we'll pause for a couple of minutes. And uh, so this, uh, so could this work with student course registration? So um, it depends. <laughs> there, there's the asterisk there. Um, it depends how much, uh, how comfortable you are with scripting. Um, so uh, again, we are not a um, Elysian workflow subscribed school, so we don't have a, um, the default access to all of the APIs that Elysian bakes into the Elysian workflow. Uh, but theoretically, yes, I, we could code something like that. Um, just anecdotally, I don't know if you would want to with ProcessMaker, just because of all of the other stuff that Banner does on the back end to check, you know, prerequisites, eligibility, you know, any holds, anything like that. Theoretically, yeah, you could do that through scripting, um, through Process Maker, but that might be might be a little much to to do. Right, and this yeah. the supplementary comment is we have a lot of rules, especially dealing with uh, F one students. I think if I can take a run at this as well too, a little bit, Pauline, depends on um, it depends on your other the rest of your infrastructure, which student systems you're using, um, and uh, and how you're doing registration today. Process Maker as a platform is very broad based and can typically do whatever you ask it to do around um uh within within campus kind of but it a little bit depends on the other systems you've got and um if you are running things with lots of rules that typically works well in process maker when you have as you the more complexity the more uh, the more rules you get tend to tend to make a system like ours uh shine even more because it's good at uh, it's good at processing complex rules, but we'd love to talk to you a little more specifically about your um, about your infrastructure and understand that process a little bit more. Thanks for the question. How's Griff feel about Process Maker, Tyler? Griff loves it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. It sounds uh, well. It sounds like that might be uh, Michelle. That might be the the extent of our questions today. I think so. Well, that's it for today, guys. That's a wrap. Tyler, special thank you to you. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy, busy schedule. We know uh, school is ramping up. So thank you, Greg. Thank you to you as well for joining. And thank you to everybody out there. We appreciate uh, everybody taking the time out. And we will see you next time. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you. Bye.